So why am I making a video on how to get strong using just a barbell? Well, really, it's to simplify things, to bring everything back down to its roots. See, I'm always talking about base building, about widening out the background of skill and ability that you have to build a potentially higher peak. And that doesn't just go for adding some mass in the off season or for doing some reps or for fixing your bullshit hammies before you go back to maxing your deadlift every week. It applies to your knowledge gains as well. The longer I've had this channel, it's bothered me that the content is kind of scattershot by design. And if I'm just giving my two cents about a lot of different methods of training and training topics as they pop up, then I'm not really telling you all how to bring it back to one particular method. So I've long wanted to kind of ground everything back into a series or something that builds towards more of a unified theory of training. This certainly isn't that, but hopefully it helps ground and recenter the discussion a little bit so we can start at the beginning and have a firm foundation for building up into more complex discussions of training. So when I started this channel, there were some big problems that I wanted to address that I know I struggled with, that I thought most of you were struggling with, and that's where a lot of the early success came from. So the problems were uncomplicating programming because there's so many different ways to program. Each one has its own learning curve and individual variation screws with all of that. So the way information is presented, it's just like, like I said, a scatter shot of random bits of knowledge and you have to figure out how to take them and plug them in in a meaningful way. It's a mess. So I wanted to uncomplicate that. I wanted to limit the need for equipment because many of you train out of your garage or travel or don't have the ability or maybe even the desire to utilize a bunch of varied equipment in order to just get a reasonable amount of size and strength. I wanted to focus on the big things, the things that give the biggest return to teach you how to locate and emphasize the most important aspects of your training so you spend less time getting lost in the minutia, which is a big reason I think a lot of people struggle. I wanted to make the four S's accessible. That is strength, size, stamina, and aesthetics. Those should be accessible to everybody. They should be extremely easy to get if you follow the, the basic foundational principles. I believe that to be true. So I wanted to get back to that. And a lot of you are gonna say you don't care about this, but I'm going to mention it anyways. Tethering your training back to strength culture as a whole, no matter what, I think it's optimal to have a style of training that keeps you with kind of one foot in the water, whether it's strength sports, whether it's bodybuilding and aesthetics, because you have to pull something from all of these different fields. They all have something special to teach you about how to optimize, prioritize those qualities. And that's going to benefit everybody, no matter what your goal is. And as time goes on, you might decide that you want to transition and try a bodybuilding show, or you might decide that you want to jump into a powerlifting or strongman meet. So don't convince yourself that you're better off being the weirdo over here on the island with the other weirdos who just want to do the weird style of training that you guys like doing at the expense of literally everything else, because that antisocial approach is not the way to a robust base of ability that leads to very substantial physical performance. You want to be able to take from everything, and this is going to help address that. It's going to help connect you to the rest of strength training as a whole. As I always say, in the multicultural space of strength culture, squatting, pressing, deadlifting is the universal language. Now, when it comes to training with just a barbell or at least having a very, very minimalist approach, some of you might already do this. And for others, this might be a good thought experiment. Maybe you shouldn't stop doing what you're already doing, but thinking about how you would run your training if you had to focus on just a few things, that might be helpful for reprioritizing things and getting yourself unstuck. And for others still, this might be a viable method for you to consider taking up that's going to help work around your inconsistent schedule or maybe just the fact that you're burnt out. This is going to help refocus things so that you can start getting reasonable growth again in a way that's simple and fits your lifestyle. So the big consideration that I want to talk about before we get started, and that is the lie that goes around. This lie is absolutely devastating to lifters, and it's not explicitly stated, but it is heavily, heavily implied in the way that videos, books, magazines, and the bottomless pit of research papers are presented to everybody. And the lie is that there is some optimal way to train, some one size fits all that is universally better for everyone. And your primary mission is not to evaluate your training right now based on whether or not it works and what problems it solves for you, but to evaluate it against this imaginary standard of, is it perfect? Are you doing the best program that you could be doing? Are you doing the scientifically proven exercises that came off the PubMed top 10 list of ways to grow your pecs? Is it in the correct split? 
Is it the exact right number of sets and reps? Are you training at the perfect RPE? We all know that if your RIR isn't just right, you're just leaving gains on the table. Now, most of you probably know where this type of thinking goes. You might've ran into this problem yourself. The second you run into a wall in your training with this type of mindset, you're going to decide that you're obviously just not on the right program. The solution is self-evident to you. Like if you board the wrong plane, you're trying to get to France and this one's going to South Africa. The only way you're gonna get there is if you get off the plane and get on the right one. So the self-evident solution is that you have to abandon ship because there's only one vessel out there that's going to ferry you to Gainesville and it's the one you're not on. Now it never occurs to you that you could actually make a few minor course corrections and that would actually be pretty easy and faster. It'd be a better option than just jumping into the ocean and hoping the right freighter picks you up. So I'm here to settle this lie of the perfect program. It's not a thing, it's imaginary. And that pressure you're putting on yourself is causing more harm than any potential good it could cause. Good training boils down to this. If you do some good exercises on a regular basis and are able to increase stress in those over time, you will grow. If you stop growing, and this applies to novices and advanced lifters alike, it's because you need some more stress, more recovery, or some element of novelty. Those are the three things that you have to balance to keep progress coming long term. That balancing act is really all of programming, and it works for one time per week power building programs, just like it does for five times per week full body DUP splits. Good programming is titrating forward based on the most recent thing that you adapted to. So I'm here to tell you that your training does not in fact balance on the head of a pin. So when life requires more of your time away from the gym or when you're left with very little equipment or if you're just burnt the hell out, it should be freeing to know that you have options and you can always bring your training down to the foundational elements and still get a good return. And a lot of people are just going to want an approach to training that doesn't require every set being a bloodbath and they want a program that's so simple that they can put it on autopilot and shut their brain off. So this brings us to something that doesn't get explicitly stated, but is one of the most important things when it comes to picking a program and making decisions in your training. It is better to maximize a suboptimal program than to do a quote unquote optimal program half acidly. So what you end up doing is instead of asking, is this the best possible split exercise selection, amount of volume, intensity, effort, so on. Instead, you need to ask, is this something that I can commit to doing, commit to doing well, and that I can figure out over time how to milk for more and more and more progress? Because that score is going to determine how much growth you're actually going to get long-term, not the imaginary score. If in a perfect world, if I lived on a compound and got a stipend and I was paid to just lift all day, would this be the best way I should do things? So remember, again, the true mastery of programming is not selecting the perfect thing, but in committing to one approach and tweaking it one molecule at a time until it is molded perfectly to you. It's kind of like, don't ask what your program can do for you, ask what you can do for your program to make it work. So given all that, we're gonna cover the big reasons why you might consider simplifying your program by utilizing primarily barbell movements. The first one is if you have limited time available to go to the gym or if you have limited equipment. So this is the practical stuff, which is probably gonna hit home the most with many of you. All of you are human beings with obligations, responsibilities, and conscious experiences that don't involve thinking about what your next workout is going to be like. I don't want to give any more reason to you guys to use gym as a way to avoid your marital problems or to isolate yourself away from your responsibilities. I know what it's like to use training as a form of self-harm instead of a predictable, deliberate way to get bigger and stronger. Guys, if I can help fund this channel and help you solve a problem, I call that a win-win. So please allow me one moment to preach the good word of Boost Camp. I tend to get a little complex when I'm writing workout plans. Tracking progress for these programs is hugely important, but options were never great. I would write these long, complex progressions by hand into a notebook, or I would carry a binder filled with spreadsheets I printed off of Lift Vault. That's why I'm here to introduce you to Boost Camp. Boost Camp is the easy way to track training progress directly from your phone. Their library of programs features countless dozens of powerlifting and hypertrophy specific programs from your favorite creators, including Jeffrey Verity Schofield, Johnny Candido, Eric Helms, Greg Knuckles, Alberto Nunez, and of course, yours truly. Boost Camp also has exclusive programs that you just won't find anywhere else. Select the one best suited to your needs and watch the sets, reps, weights, and exercises 
populate automatically. Don't guess at that one weight you lifted that one time for how many reps again? Have your log of training with you at all times for easy reference in the convenience of your phone. Not only does Boostcamp have a stellar product, but their support is the only reason this channel exists. So thank you, the viewer, and thank you to Boostcamp. Check it out today. The link is in the description. So I actually want to help everybody make the most out of what little time they do have available. Barbell only training doesn't require a special forces operator level of grit to get through and it's not going to suck 10 hours per week out of your weekly schedule. Now, if we're being honest, if we're comparing the best in the world or the people that wanna be the most competitive, more time and more effort generally does correlate with more growth. We see that trend in all of sports, but intelligent programming does more so. So if getting through your workout requires reliving childhood trauma every time you step up to the bar and timing that 300 milligram of caffeine to hit right at the 90 minute mark, then the programming aspect of your approach probably leaves something to be desired. So we wanna revisit that. Training with just a barbell also requires very few pieces of equipment, obviously a barbell, a bench and a rack, some plates, and it's something that anybody can set up in their garage for a few hundred dollars and access to Craigslist. You can likely find a gym during any travel excursion, no matter how remote the location you travel to. For those of you that have never had a problem getting to your gym to get your workout in, like that's great but a lot of people underestimate how easy it is to get sidelined when you're stuck having to train at home or if you travel frequently or unexpectedly and if you're gone for long periods of time. Limiting your work to just a barbell allows you to get just as big and strong as most of you otherwise would have. Actually more if you consider the likelihood that you suffer from crippling training indecision or shiny object syndrome. And it also makes your training impervious to the bullshit that life likes to throw at you that sidelines your most important weekly rituals. Now, the second thing the barbell only training is going to do, it's going to uncomplicate your programming. If you have specific questions pertaining to the best row angle for lower lat hypertrophy, if you really like to dissect your training to that microscopic of detail, there are better sources out there for that. But if you're here because you are an average tier lifter with a medium physique and you want to hit your next level up before you get your AARP membership application, you've come to the right place. So firstly, know that if you're stuck, you can pull off a few more quantum leaps before you have to retire and hang up the cowl just by simplifying your training. Predominantly barbell programs have a limited number of exercises to select from. The big three, right? That dominates everything. Squat, bench, deadlift. The big four, if you like overhead pressing. The big five, if you count barbell rows, which you absolutely should. So that's only five exercises to strengthen every major movement pattern in your body and to grow all of the muscles responsible for them. The rest is just gonna be small isolation movements that you can tag on the end, curls, tricep extensions, upright rows, and so on. So the fact that the exercise selection is so limited makes for one less thing to cause you crippling indecision. Barbell programs also usually follow one of two splits. It's either a single lift emphasis where you do a lot of work for one lift or one series of muscle groups, or some type of whole body split where you run through upper and lower body lifts in the same workout both of them. They're just fine. One is not inherently better than the other. Really, you just have to ask yourself about your temperament, what style of training appeals to you, what your schedule can tolerate, and then move forward from there. It's not about finding the best split. It's about establishing a consistent work schedule, hitting your prescribed numbers on the main lift, and then committing to improving the next time you're in the gym. That's it. The progressions used in barbell specific training are typically simple, painfully simple, so much so that they can usually be summarized in a catchy book title. 531, fifth set, heavy light medium. They all tell you exactly where to start, exactly how to add weight, exactly for how long, and exactly what to do next. So if you have any questions about how programming works in general, and you haven't glued yourself to one of these programs, it's like a teenager who skipped a driver's ed asking if he can fly the plane. So your mission should be to start with the simple stuff. Stick to one of these programs. If you can show up, hit your numbers, and remember to write them down so you know what to do next time, congratulations, you've mastered 90% of programming. Now the third aspect, which is also going to be extremely relevant for more complex advanced programs in the future, should you get to that point, is to emphasize what gives the biggest return. Barbell training is already the backbone of just about all of the strength programs out there. So what we're talking about isn't really gonna be too far off from what you've probably already been doing. But don't underestimate the power of narrowing your focus even more, because even the other stuff, the stuff you didn't think much of, the variations, the machines, the smaller movements you tack on the end, 
Those could be the things sitting in the back of your subconscious, sucking attention and resources away from the important things, the way that malware sits in the background of your PC and sucks memory from your CPU. So by insisting on a program that only focuses on the big stuff, we're not only making sure that we put the spotlight on the stuff that gives us the biggest return, but we're making sure that we're not directing attention to other things that give little to none. We're making sure that we can take that big thing and just milk it for all it's worth, phrasing. In a fully fleshed out program, everything should be additive. You should be getting the most out of the barbell lifts and every other bit of work that you do outside of that should do nothing but compound that progress. But despite your best intentions, it's really easy to shut it down early when you're having a bad day or to jump around trying different variations or radically overhauling your program. These points of changes and inconsistency can absolutely kill your progress. Just consider if we look at Pareto's law, which basically says that 80% of your returns come from 20% of your investments. It's not too hard to look at training in general and see where 80% of your gains are going to come from. It's a mistake to think that you are going to start with a sufficiently complex, perfect program and that you're going to get this theoretical 100% of your gains. That's not a real thing. Instead, what actually happens is because you try to encompass everything, you end up focusing the most amount of time on the 80% that gives you that 20% of a return. That ends up consuming all of your time and attention and you end up fiddling with little things that don't have anything to do with why you haven't hit a PR in the last six months. This is also a really big Mr. Miyagi moment because it teaches you to put your eggs in the right basket. Every high level competitive lifter and bodybuilder has to be in tune with what their training is doing at the moment in real time. They have to evaluate if they're wasting time on something that's not going to give a return and they can't wait until the end of the macro cycle to establish that. So by practicing now to focus on the big things and to move those forward, you'll develop a habit of not skipping out on those important aspects to focus on smaller things that don't matter as much. More importantly, you're going to get a sixth sense for what that good productive growth stimulus actually feels like. So you won't have to wait until the end of a full workout cycle to know if you got your money's worth or not. Now, the last thing to consider, again, this is the one that many of you are going to swear you don't care about, but I'm going to pull the father card and say, son, you're too young to know what you want yet. And that is, keeping you tethered to strength culture at large, making sure that you have one toe in multiple different pools. There's a few reasons to do that, and I'm going to go over those one by one. But let's consider what I experienced when I was a young lifter. When I was your age, son, I wasn't especially aesthetic and I didn't have abs. In fact, I was pretty fat, a lot fatter than I am now. Once I started to see how easy it was to get strong, as long as I ate a lot of food and got the minimum number of workouts in, I convinced myself that that's actually what I really wanted to do. I wasn't like those other guys fixated on their small waistlines or their bicep peaks. Those were Neanderthals. I had the enlightened take. I wanted substance over style. Well, fast forward a decade of really hard work and really impressive gains in strength, and I looked like a completely different person, but I was still pretty fat and unesthetic. After all that time, I realized that I was really engaging in one big cope. The fact is, I did want to look better, and I realized how silly it was that for all that work in the gym, I didn't do some very small things that taken out over time would have led to a completely different physique so that I might be really strong, but also not look like a pasty white turd. Now it's completely fine for any one of you to have a priority, a primary goal and say this other stuff isn't really what I'm worried about doing right now, but you don't want to make the mistake of completely dismissing it as if it's something you want to go out of your way to avoid. I'm a hypertrophy guy and I actively don't want to do anything remotely connected to getting stronger, or I'm a power lifter and I actively don't want to do anything related to hypertrophy or superficial muscular development. I can tell you that when you make all of that progress in your chosen field, it's going to stick in the back of your throat that you didn't do just a little bit more to diversify your portfolio. You don't have to be an expert in every arena, but doing something to stay connected to these other fields is going to give you a wider base because everyone has something vital to teach the other. We all utilize the same principles. We're all propped up on the same methods of progression, the same equipment. There's a lot more overlap than people like to think. And the hyper niching off of these different groups is largely an illusion. It's largely more about uh, social groups and people trying to form their training around their identity, how they see themselves as a bodybuilder, a powerlifter, a strongman, and so on. Now, if you are a young guppy and you do want to add a substantial amount of mass, get some growth, 
lean out a little bit, improve your lifts. If you have general size, strength, physique goals, by emphasizing barbell work, you're only going to learn how to put on size and thickness with such simple protocols that when you do incorporate like regular bodybuilding work, it's going to feel like cheating. And as far as strength goes, you're going to gain the strength and skill of a power lifter because you're using those movements as your main developmental juice but you're still going to have the rep and work capacity of a strongman because you won't have shied away from those high rep, high volume workouts that lead to that type of growth. You're going to have a close connection to all of these different styles of training. So as you develop, if you decide you want to jump ship and become a bodybuilder, it will be very easy to do that because you have so much more mass than when you started and you got it in a much shorter period of time. If you want to transition into powerlifting or strongman, it will be so easy for you to make that transition because all of your training was oriented around those movements and those training thresholds. And again, I know most of you don't care about this, but this type of work also makes you generally useful. Like, yeah, the number of times where life will require the average person to make use of their excess strength for the benefit of another, it's gonna be few and far between. And when it does happen, it's not because you were like saving someone from danger. It's probably because somebody was like drunk at a party and like put you on the spot by asking you to pick something up. But regardless of the situation, when it does pop up, I can tell you it's not a great feeling to be known as the muscular guy or the person who's expected to be useful, who turns out not to be really that useful at all. Doesn't matter if it's picking somebody up on the spot or helping your buddy move. It's good to have more utility than none. And you would be surprised how much a lot of specialized types of training actually don't really lend itself to being any more useful day to day. In fact, if I see a sufficiently muscled individual, I'm less likely to ask that person to help me move to an upstairs apartment because I know how quickly they gas out with a sofa on their shoulder going up a flight of stairs. So generally more useful types of training, if they also get you all the strength, all the size, all the mass, all the other stuff that you want, along with this extra added superpower of being helpful to the people around you, I think that's more of a win-win. Is that overly romantic? Absolutely it is. But the problem of the average lifter is not that they are burdened with too much purpose or too high an expectation. So doing barbell specific work is a great way to stay tethered to that basic amount of utility, whether it's stepping into other forms of competition as you get developed enough to think, oh, hey, I wanna try that. Or if it's just, you know, helping people move, being the guy that people can rely on for physical tasks, kind of a cool thing. So that's all I got for today, guys. That is why I would have you strongly consider barbell only training, or at least look at it as a thought experiment. Ask yourself if you have room to simplify your training. Ask yourself if there's a lot of extraneous stuff that's taking time and attention away, that's throwing a wrench in the gears. Can you use some of these ideas to try to refocus your stuff? After this, I'm going to have more in-depth stuff into exactly how these progressions work, exactly how you should run them, exactly what to do when certain problems pop up, and exactly how to tie those lessons into more complex advanced forms of training so we can bring all this stuff full circle. So that's all I got for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Leave your questions in the comments. Better yet, take it to Patreon. That's where I upload my training weekly. That's where I answer questions weekly. The easiest way to get in contact with me is there. Thanks again, guys. Until next time, this is Bromley. I'll see you.